Hello there, everybody. Today we're going to talk about voltaic cells, otherwise known as uh, galvanic cells. You'll hear those two terms like interchangeably. Voltaic cells, galvanic cells, eh, means the same thing. Can be used either way. Um, so here we have a reaction. We've been talking about redox processes, and if you take a piece of zinc and you put it into a solution of copper sulfite or where there's Cu plus two ions, there's going to be a redox reaction that happens. Electrons go from the zinc metal to the Cu plus two ions that are in the solution. And um, here we have the two half reactions there. So zinc, it's losing the two electrons. Keep that in mind, it's becoming Zn plus two. And the Cu plus two ions, the copper ions themselves, are gaining those electrons and becoming solid Cu. Now, this reaction is spontaneous. It's exothermic. It releases free energy. So if you remember the delta G stuff, delta G is negative here. And so there's some energy being released here. And if Gosh, if only we could somehow harness that energy that's being used, we could maybe do something that's good with it. And this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about the ways in which we can actually harness that energy um, to make what we call a voltaic cell, which is the basis of all battery technology. So that's what it's all about here today. Um, in, the, in this part of the unit, we're going to be talking about electrochemical cells. We're going to be talking about these for a while. Um, electrochemical cells are, let's call them useful devices that are based on redox processes. And there's two main types. There are galvanic or voltaic cells, they're the same thing. These use redox reactions that are spontaneous, that happen on their own. Remember when we talked about spontaneity, it just means it's a reaction that happens on its own without constant energy input. These things generate electrical energy like a battery. A battery is a type of or made up of voltaic cells. Um, Electrolytic cells are sort of the opposite. They use reactions that are non-spontaneous. In fact, you have to use electricity to power an electrolytic cell. And uh, it may not be obvious how that's useful, but it is useful in a couple different ways. And we'll talk about it. They do things like uh, metal purification, electroplating. Uh, that's how we get aluminum, for instance. So there's a lot of things that can be done with electrolytic cells as well. But that's going to be down the road. Today, we're going to start talking about the voltaic cells. So um, here's the idea with voltaic cells. Instead of having that reaction like I showed you earlier, where we have the zinc strip that's inside of the copper solution, basically what you're doing is you are separating them. Um, you're separating the two parts of the reaction into separate containers, into separate cells. And electrons are going to flow between those cells due to what we call uh, an electric potential difference between them. And we'll be developing that idea more later. Um, so here's a diagram of a voltaic cell. And uh, so it's the same reaction that we looked at in the very first slide. It's zinc <clears throat> reacting with copper ions. Um, but instead of happening in one beaker, it's been split up into two different beakers. And uh, so you dip those metals into each cell. Those are called electrodes. The electrode where oxidation occurs is called the anode. Um, in a voltaic cell, this is considered the negative electrode. And, you know, we've talked already about the terminology in this unit and the fact that it can be a little bit confusing. But um, the electrolytic cell in a voltaic cell, I should say, um, oxidation occurs at the anode. And here we have the piece of zinc metal that is the anode in this case. So, um, what happens is the zinc metal loses electrons and becomes zinc plus two. Now, instead of the zinc actually being in with the copper solution, it's in a separate container. And what that does is it forces the electrons to travel across this wire. Instead of being able to directly re react right in the same container, um, the, the electrons are forced to pass through the wire. And then in the other cell, we have the electrode. In this case, it's copper. This is where reduction occurs, and it's called the cathode. In a voltaic cell, this is considered the positive electrode. So we have our negative anode. We have a positive electrode. Again, it's a little bit of confusing technology, uh, but we'll try to get it all straightened out. And I do have some ways to help you remember. 
So what you want is you want to drive this chemical reaction to happen across between the two different half cells. This is one half cell, this is the other half cell. So usually the way you set it up is you place the electrode in a solution of its own ion. So for instance, in this cell, what I would put is I would put this zinc and I would fill this with some zinc solution, like maybe zinc chloride or zinc nitrate. And this copper cell, I'd put it inside a solution to start off with of a copper ion. The idea here is we do not want a chemical reaction actually taking place within the half cell because if there's a reaction taking place here, if the electrons have somewhere to go here or there's a reaction that could take place here, these electrons are probably not going to travel over the wire. So just in the setup of this cell, we have zinc and zinc ions, we have copper and Cu plus two ions. And we'll talk more about the uh, rest of the setup. So we break this down again. Um, the zinc is changing into zinc plus two. It's losing two electrons. The electrons travel across the wire. And of course, you can you can do stuff with these electrons here. There's just a voltmeter there, but um, you know you could in theory uh, power a little battery or whatever, uh, power a little light bulb like or something like that. Um, so electrons travel across the wire. Now we have to complete the circuit, of course. And what allows the circuit to be complete is something called the salt bridge. Salt bridge allows ions to pass back and forth. Um, electrons do not, free electrons, do not travel across this salt bridge and do not travel across, they do not travel around the solution at all, really. It's these ions that actually carry the charge across and complete the circuit. Um, Anions, which as you hopefully recall are negative ions, in the solution they're going to end up drifting towards the anode, and cations, which are positive ions, you might recall, end up drifting towards the cathode. Now, a um, couple of things. It's no coincidence, anion, anode, anode, cation, cathode, those things, those two words are named for each other. I don't know which came first, you know, it's a it's a real chicken and egg type situation, but it's not coincidence that those two words are so similar. But if you're kind of thinking about it for a second, um, something might seem weird to you here. I said the anode is considered the negative electrode. And then I'm also saying anions, which are negative ions, are moving towards the electrode. You'd think if they're negative, they would be repelled by the anode, since I'm calling the electrode the anode negative. Um, well, it's a matter of point of view. Okay, the anode's called negative because if you are in this wire, you know, if you're a light bulb on this wire or whatever we're doing, this is the important part to us. This is the part that we're going to use to power something with. From the perspective of this wire, the electrons are coming from this direction. So for you, you know, imagine yourself as a, a little uh, little dude or dudette here sitting in this wire, okay? Like from your point of view here in the wire, you're very happy to be in a wire. The electrons are coming from this direction. So from your point of view, this is a negative electrode and they're going towards that way. Uh, so that's the positive electrode. But if you are in one of these cells, and you're, it's actually a completely different story. If you're a little dude swimming in this cell here, you're going to look at it differently. From your point of view, there's zinc plus two ions constantly coming off of this electrode because every time zinc loses two electrons, a little Zn plus two pops off into the solution. So this is a big source of positiveness that's bursting off in the solution. So if you are a negative ion, so if you're a little anion dude, you're going to be attracted over this way towards the anode. Same thing if you're a little positive, from your point of view in this solution, this is where electrons are coming from. Electrons are coming from down here, and as a positive ion, you're going to be attracted towards the cathode. So anions move towards the anode, cations move towards the cathode. Electrons travel across the wire from anode to cathode. Um, whoops, uh, what's the salt bridge? Uh, traditionally, it's just a little hollow glass tube that's got some absorbent stuff in it, and you want to soak it with stuff just to kind of get the ball rolling as far as the ions go. Um, the, the, the cell will not operate without the salt bridge. It's like having an incomplete, cir uh, incomplete circuit. What you want to do is you want to soak it with something that's inert, something that's inact uh, not very reactive, like a sodium nitrate solution, for instance. Um, and again, you don't want side reactions occurring here. 
you don't want to put some pretty reactive ions in here. Um, sodium ions are really unreactive. Nitrate ions are really unreactive. We'll talk more about the reasons that these are unreactive later. Um, but you just don't want any side reactions here. You don't want to precipitate forming. If you remember, we talked about double replacement reactions. You wouldn't want precipitates forming. That could screw up your, your cell. So you want something nice and reactive on the cell bridge initially. Okay, so there are some little mnemonic devices here to help remember some things about the cell and how it's set up. Um, first of all, remember we said electrons, there's an unnecessary therefore in there, uh, electrons flow from anode to cathode. Fat cat is a way to remember that, from anode to cathode. Like this guy. I think that may be photoshopped, but uh, th that's a fat cat. Um, CPR is another thing to help you remember it. Cathode reduction positive. By the way, this these things that I'm saying here are true for voltaic cells, not necessarily electrolytic cells, the other type of cells that we're going to talk about here. This is true for voltaic cells. So fat cat can help you remember electrons flow from anode to cathode. Um, another thing that can help you remember is CPR, cathode reduction positive. Okay, Because if you can remember that the cathode is the place where reduction occurs and that it's positive, then you can remember that the electrode, the uh, anode, is the opposite of that. It's where oxidation occurs and it's the negative electrode. So CPR is handy to kind of help you remember uh, the general setup of the cell. And, you know, uh, electrons go from, from anode to cathode. They're always going to go from oxidation to reduction because oxidation is losing electrons, reduction is gaining it. So a little CPR phrase can, can be helpful to help piece it all together. Okay, one last thing to talk about here is cell notation, um, which is a way we sort of relatively quickly indicate the contents of an electrolytic cell. And you do it from left to right, from anode to cathode, usually. And you use little lines. Um, a single line is a phase boundary. And that's usually going to be between the electrode and the ions in solution. Uh, multiple ions, if they're in there. Sometimes we might look at cells where there's several ions are going to be separated by a comma. The reason it says multiple non-spectator, you usually leave spectator ions out of your complaint. And then a double line is used for the cell bridge. So um, in this example here, this is the same one that was on the other page. We've got a zinc electrode that's dipped into zinc ions, like we talked about. Double line for the cell bridge. And then you start with the other ions, which are Cu plus 2 ions, and then uh, the electrode, which is made of copper. So it goes from anode to cathode, and it starts with the electrode of the anode and ends up with the electrode on the cathode. So zinc solid, that's sitting in zinc ion, Cu plus 2, Cu electrode. So that's where that comes from. Uh, and that is it. That is the end of this video. That is the very basics of, of galvanic cells and voltaic cells. I have to think very carefully myself so I don't get confused and say the wrong words. Um, so that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.